Hey, how's it going everyone? In this video, we will be creating Postman environment and take a look at how you can work with multiple environments. So an environment in Postman is kind of like a virtual space where you can store a set of variables. And every time you switch from one environment to another, your environment variables will get updated in your request on the fly. Now, if you take a look at this example over here, so we have a production environment and we have a test environment. So you can create as many environments as you want. So in this example, I'm creating a production environment and I have this test environment. So you can store some set of variables in your production environment. For example, you can have a base URL, API key, API token, and in your test environment, you can have the same ones with the same name as base URL, API key, and API token. Now, what will happen is if you're working with the production environment, it will have access to all these variables over here. Now, if you switch it to from production to test environment, then it will switch all the variables from basically calling to this HTTPS API.trello.com. It will start calling test.api.trello.com. And then it will also update your test API key from this API key to the test API key. So this is the advantage you get with environment variables. You can basically have the same variable name, but depending on which context you're working with, you can switch your variables based on that particular context. Now, this is extremely helpful, obviously, when you're working with multiple environments. If you only will working with one environment, then it's probably not as useful to create an environment. Instead, you should probably just use a collection variable as we discussed in the previous video. But if you have multiple environments that you're working with and you constantly have to keep switching between one environment to another, instead of keep updating your variable one by one, you can just set up that as an environment variable so that it's happening automatically on the fly. Now let's head over to Postman and see how we can create an environment and store some set of variables in that. All right, so I'm back in Postman. And if you remember, we created this Trello collection. If you haven't checked out this video, make sure to check it out so that you can see how to create a collection and store some API requests in that. So I'm just going to open up for this one. And here we have our API key and API token. This is currently stored as our collection variable. Now what we will do is store this api.trello.com, which is our base URL into an environment variable. Now to do that, it's pretty simple, just like we did this for our API key and API token in our previous video. So to create an environment, what I will do is click on this I button over here. And here I have an option of environment. Currently it says no active environment. I will click on this add link over here. And then I have an option to give my environment a name. So this one, I'm going to call this, let's say our production environment. And then it's asking me to give me a variable, which is basically create first variable for this particular environment. Now I can call this one, let's say base URL. And I have to pass in my actual value for that. So the value I will pass in is basically the HTTPS slash, and then I'm going to do api.trello.com. And I'm also going to add in the version one. And this will automatically add in the current value too. Now the difference between initial value and the current value is the initial value is actually synced to your account, which is whichever account that you actually logged in with. In my case, I'm logged in with the automation bro account. So it's going to be synced with my Postman server. And the current value is something that's stored in your local. So let's say if you want to change your current value to something else, you can do that too. But if instead, if you're switching, let's say your machines and you would want to get access to the base URL that you set up originally, that's when it will actually pull up the initial value. It won't pull up your current value because that's stored locally. All right. So what we're going to do is just to add here. And what this did is created my production environment. And then I have access to my variables there. So I will just close this. Now, if I want to use the variable that we just created, what I will do is come over here and then just replace this URL with my new variable that I created. So I will do this one base URL. Now, one thing to notice is if I hover over to this, it still says that base URL does not exist or basically that's an unresolved variable. So how come it's not able to find the variable that we just created? Well, the reason being is we are still not in the environment that we created. If you notice here on the top, it still says no environment. What we need to do is switch to the environment we just created, which was our production environment. So if I click on this arrow button and if you notice, we have this production here. If I click on that. Now, if you notice, this is turned into an orange. That means it found the variable. Now, if I hover over to this, you can see my actual value. The initial value and the current value is there. And I can also see the scope, which is environment. Versus if I come here, you will see the API key and the scope for this is collection. So this is how you can create your environment level variable. What I will do is simply save this first and then hit send to make sure this is working. All right. So everything is still good. I'm getting a 200 OK response. That means our base URL is actually working. So that's pretty cool. So now what I'm going to do is create another environment. So let's say if you're working with your production environment and you also have your test environment that you need to work with and you often have to switch context between both of them. So for that, what we will do is click on this gear button here, which says manage environment. 
when I click there, I can see my production moment already being created here. I will create another one. I'll do add. This one I will name this test environment. And I'm gonna do the same thing base URL. Now this time I will add different value. I will do test.api.trello.com. Uh, now this doesn't exist, so obviously this won't really work for us, but I'm just doing it for an example. So this is good. This is added. And I'm gonna add this here. So we have our test environment as it is production environment. I'm gonna close this. If I send this, this is still working because this is part of a production environment. But if I switch this to my test environment, now if I hit send, there you go. It says could not send request and it's actually not working. And the reason being is there is no URL that has test.api.trello.com. And that was just for the demonstration purposes. This doesn't actually work. But you can see that it is now, if I hover over to this, it is actually now switching to test.api.trello.com. So we can anytime, let's say if you're working with test environment, you can switch it to test. Or if you're working with production, you can switch it to the production environment. If I hit send, everything would still work. There you go. Awesome. So you're not just limited to adding one variable there. You can go to your environment. Let's say if I go to my production environment and here, if I just do, I click on this and I can add in more variable. I can, let's say if my production has a separate API key, I can add that too. And I can add my value here for that API key. If I update and if I close this for my API key right now, if you notice it has updated to that particular scope. Now, one thing to notice is the way scoping works. You have at the very top level global scope where is everything is on the global level. Then you have collection level. So if you create something collection level, collection level will override the global scope. But if you create something on the environment level, environment level will override the collection scope. And if you create something on the local level, which is in your script, it will override your environment variable. So you have to understand how this different variable scope works. So in this point, I've created this API key, which is on the environment level. So this is overriding my actual collection level API key. Now, if you remember in my collection level API key, if I go here do edit, this is what I have. This is my collection level API key versus in my environment level API key. This is the one that I just created. Now, obviously I don't want this because this is not a valid API key. I will remove that. And if just to show you demonstration, if I click send, this would just say invalid key because it's picking up the new API key that we just added on the environment level. So I'll go back here, go to production and then just get rid of this. There you go. And click update. So here you can just keep adding as many environment as you want, as well as as many variables as you want depending on your use case for your particular application. All right, so that's how you can create environment in Postman. What I will do is quickly just update this for my other URL too, which is this one. I've already updated the API key and API token. I'll simply come here and then change this to base URL. And make sure this works. Hit send. Yep, all good. Save this one. Now my both the requests have the base URL, which is on the environment level and the API key and the API token, which is on the collection level. Awesome. So that's how you can create environments in Postman. And most likely when you're working in a company, you will probably have more than one environment setup, which you can use to toggle between different sets of variables. All right, if you enjoyed this video, guys, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.